Lyndon Chapman and I'm the creator of Is the Wi-Fi Good in Hell? Hi, I'm Megs Kamari. I'm a writer and actor in Same Same But Different. I'm M Thane. I'm also a writer and actor in Same Same But Different. So, <laughs> is the Wi-Fi good in hell? Who knows? <laughs> um, so, is the Wi-Fi good in hell is a coming of age queer tragic comedy piece. Uh, it's a one-man show um, from a character called Deb, his journey from boyhood to manhood um, and like how growing up in Margate affected his adulthood and growing up in a Derek Seaside town affected his further life and the romanticisation of London and London's romanticisation mm. of Margate and mm. yeah, just a queer story. Mm. I think loads of people can relate to that, like I, yeah. I grew up in a, yeah, we both mm. grew up in separate but distinctly small mm. towns yeah. and like being queer in those towns is crazy because then you do come, like literally I remember coming to London and I felt like the sheath of oppression leave my shoulders. <laughs> sheath. Yeah. And I, I remember as it was like as the graffiti starts to be more common on the walls when you're on the train from Salisbury. Um, and I got here and I was like, oh my god, this is where I'm meant to be. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited to see your show. No, I'm glad mm. people can relate to that, like the like putting London on a pedestal, but mm. actually finding sort of a place in London. But also sometimes um, London can surprise you and show you its bad parts and mm, as every yeah. place can though so I think it was interesting exploring that within the text yes. When did you mm. come move to London? I a few times I sort of moved yeah. originally before Covid and I head right. back to Margate then 2021 then I'm back in Margate again so mm -hmm. I'm always dipping my foot in and out um, and I've always been I think the play was a good chance for me to really um, articulate and reflect on my relationship with Margate because it has changed a lot over the years mm. with like mm. London loving Margate now <laughs> when growing up there I hated it so much and I yeah. wanted nothing more than to move out so it was interesting exploring in that respect now Margate is like almost a queer yeah quite yeah. a queer place yeah I was going to ask about that so now is it like you've left it and you're like what yeah. like yeah <laughs> like <laughs> What? <laughs> People say, like, oh, I'm surprised you're moving to, when I was moving to London originally, like, moving to London, you know, Margate's such a, qu like, a great place to be for creatives. I'm like, well, yeah, it's a great place to be for creative if you know people mm. or if you have that, yeah. that um, reputation or you have that um, knowledge and skill or career already, but I had nothing. And yeah. therefore, I was just another... Rolling around in Margate. Yeah, just yeah, rolling yeah, around yeah. in Margate. So I think that's why I felt I had to move to London for relationships, to make mm. friends and for my career. Um, so I know it's too expensive so I'll be back home. I'll be back! <laughs> I'll yeah. be back! Um, but anyway, same, same. But uh, different. different. <laughs> Tell me all. Yeah, also queer, hence our lovely chat today. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we follow a couple, they're, they're getting together. We kind of wanted to... I think, I mean, look, it's all about representation, isn't it? Like, I think there's so much crossover with, with your play as well in terms of getting a real slice of reality and like what is mm. life like and for queer people in these different settings but yeah ours is sort of mm. slightly more about um communication and family dynamics mm. and a when real sort of a... in-depth look at mm. the the workings of a of a relationship and and how do you how yeah how do you function in that mm -hmm. yeah i think it's like it's it really narrows down narrows in on the concept of a chosen family right so yeah. which is obviously a big thing that we all know about in the queer community but it's getting to the nitty-gritty of like literally choosing like mm. yeah who is going to be in your life and in your family's life and it gets to the crux of that and it's about two people who love each other so desperately it's like ultimately like a celebration of queer joy and queer hope mm. it's not a tragedy which i think we're all really used to seeing mm -hmm. like nobody dies yeah. nobody like hates each other and yeah. it's just a slice of reality mm -hmm. that i think is i don't know um relatable for queer people yes but also from our last run like our biggest bit of feedback yeah. was that, like even the straight people that came my there parents were like, were like we relate to this and i was like great, great. <laughs> but wow you know like yeah. is yeah how did you find writing it in the sense of wanting to avoid a sort of tragic piece. Yeah. Because I yes. struggled and felt almost guilty at times writing mine, where I was trying to explore themes that are difficult yeah, in exactly. queer texts, mm -hmm. whilst also trying to avoid tropes of 
sadness and trying to write something that's uplifting whilst also exploring those things. Yeah. yeah. I completely the same. get that. <laughs> oh my God. Same. As well, it's like how you have to have tension. You have to have things yeah. happening. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Which is something we really struggled with. Same. Because we were like, we don't want it just to be like, it feels like everything that you could write that's an issue, like, oh, this person's homophobic. It's like, oh, great. Well, let's go homophobic. Yeah. Ones. But like, that really is what you need. Like, you need something, yeah. not necessarily someone homophobic, but you need some kind of drama. And in a queer specific piece, it'd be inauthentic to pretend mm. that none of the problems they yeah, face exactly. are queer related. Because these things do happen. So yeah. it's about what makes it difficult. So then you have to create these pieces and make it as real as possible yeah. Yeah. and avoid any tropes. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. really it's hard. hard. It is. <laughs> I think that living like a, like we do, you know, like we're proud people. I think it's, we have a detailed life and a rich mm. tapestry of experience. So it, we're coming from the best possible place to be writing it. Like all yeah. of us, you know, like we mm. know what it's like to be in each of the minute little things, what life is like. So we can hopefully write that mm. rather than someone coming from a different bit of experience who were like, oh, well, I don't really know how it feels. So I just do a kind of like overview an overview we've and really the zoomed. issue is that mm. right yeah. which is also important to show that i think we've tried to show these issues but it's not necessarily just about that that's yeah. it's all about woven into like the 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 reality of life as a as queer people and mm. so it's kind mm. of i don't know i don't know how to describe it it's sort of I always mingled in it. and it's not it, mm. yeah it's not it's not like somebody just presenting yeah this is problem mingled into um being in your twenties and yeah. growing up in the same, I'm yeah. sure growing up in the same sort of era, um, era, same sort of time as yeah. each other, and those are uh, interwoven into being queer, but it's not yeah. all of it's us. Not all, it's not yeah. all. Yeah, 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 yeah. I always say that the show is like two people in a, we were talking about this earlier, so there's always like two people in a, um, a tent, and it's like you're, <laughs> you're looking into the zip open door of the tent, I feel like that's where the audience are looking and it's like two people sat in there and it's Cam and Jesse and mm. they're having this time and as the play goes on the tent is sagging around them like it's been left in the field for like months <laughs> and it's sagging in and they're and like they're, they're feeling the tent pulling pushing in and they're like holding it out and they're desperately they're looking at each other trying to hold this tent up and that for me is what the show is about and the homophobia and all the stuff is is all the stuff outside the tent so yeah. like, yes you're seeing the effects of it but you it's not the camera's not outside the tent looking at what's going on yeah Mm. And that's the elevator pitch. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm still working on that. I think that that's a really interesting observation because we've said in our rehearsal process um, that it sometimes feels like, as queer people, you have to be like strong, solid. We're all together. Mm. Like nothing, you, you can't say anything to us. Like mm. we won't admit anything bad because you're facing the world, right? Who yeah. are always shouting bad things at you, metaphorically. <laughs> sometimes literally um and so then when you, we turn in and it's like well it's just queer people then we can be like okay we're all really flawed like yeah. this is what's going on but it <laughs> yeah, doesn't yeah. have to have like yeah. community to be able to do that and that's mm. what i think why our show and, and obviously by the sounds of it yours it's like able to talk about those things it's because it feels like a comforting atmosphere it, mm. and like a safe space it's not like you have to defend yourself and say if you know if only straight people were going to come and watch this show then you'd feel like, oh God, well, I don't want to give you more fuel. Like you already, yeah. Yeah. Are so, we're so oppressed already. It's like, I'd rather not like give you another 10 things that you can be like, oh, I never thought about that. Yeah, that's awful as well. Yeah. Like, mm. But now I think with a big queer audience and especially Bricks in the House, like the people that, the uh, patrons of the theatre, I'm so much more confident in their ability to empathise mm. and um, join in and not like just take what you're saying and throw it back at you. Yeah, definitely. How did you find um, writing it as a duo? As a trio. As a trio. As a trio. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tony, our director, has okay. co-written it with us as well. We, we, the th it's been great. Like, this is our, my first, like, thing that's been put on professionally that, that I've written. That's extremely exciting. Um, who knew that would be viable? Um, <laughs> no. Um, it's I think what really worked with us is, well, we did a scratch night at scratch night last year where we then got together as a trio and then from that we created the company and then wrote this. So it's been really interesting because we basically did a lot of devising and kind of improvising mm -hmm. and audio recording scenes and then transcribing, transcribing for, hours. for hours and hours <laughs> and then loads of editing. So. 
I think we both just very naturally worked that way. Mm -hmm. That it's been, I mean, you do a lot of improv, so that was great. But we, it's just sort of clicked, hasn't it? It's very just, much so. I think that's what's been really amazing. And now I'm like, oh, it's possible to also write as well as act. But mm -hmm. I'm like, is it only because of the, the dynamic and the way that we work is so similar and we both, I think, approach the play in the same sort of way and bring our own voices to it, obviously. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, I think we just sort of naturally have... I think it works or it doesn't. It works, yeah. It seems to work wonderfully. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Do you find it like a... You're very alone in your process because obviously you're the star, you're the writer. Mm -hmm. Like, are you like, oh, I wish I had somebody I could just bounce this scene off of? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, I mean, I'm lucky I've been quite supported in the writing journey. I start, I wrote the play at the Soho Theatre in their writer's lab. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. of course, yeah. yeah. So that was, I had a dramaturg there and you had to, like, buddy groups right. and you just met people through that and you sort of bounced it through that naturally. But, and then now I've had a, um, my director's dramaturg, dramaturging it. So mm. um, yeah, so, dramaturg. <laughs> but yes, it is very lonely writing but yeah. that's where I work best I'm a very social person but writing I take very I, I appreciate being alone I think I I find the space in between writing is where it happens the cog turn yeah, yeah. 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 Some, you know I think I, I wrote half my play like in my head on, on my notes on my phone on the way to the bus stop oh and yeah that's when I find I, I create best one lines or I hear something or I say something or someone else says mm -hmm. something and that's what, what resonates and not and I really struggle going to a library and sitting down, you know. Yeah, I'm being like, this is it. I write in bed. Like, yeah. Same. And this is your yeah. second time performing it? Yeah. So how does it feel to perform it again for a second time, this new lease of life? I'm so excited. Yeah, I think too. we've done such, well, kind of so, like, a lot of big changes to the script. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like, it's still, the, the core is the same, the essence is the same, the kind of, journeys are roughly the same mm. so it's it's just sort of slightly shifted and I think I mean we're a year older it's been like a year since we wrote it mm. since we started writing it so I think it's been actually really what a great opportunity to come back to it and be able to hopefully make it even better and and make dynamic shifts to it yeah and, and work on you know some of the bits of feedback that we had from last time and be like great we've actually got a, an amazing opportunity to implement that mm. and really just like boost the show and i'm so excited to start i'm like so i i love where the script's at now mm. i i'm very excited it feels fresh but if, i feel like we obviously still know it mm. so it's <laughs> Do we? <laughs> <laughs> we will be knowing it. <laughs> we will have time. <laughs> but you know, we, we know what it's about. But it's I'm, I can't wait to get in the room. I just can't wait to get it on its feet now. I'm, mm. I'm so ready. So ready. So ready. <laughs> yeah. 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 Also, it's an amazing opportunity with Brixton House, right? Like, yeah. For, to oh, have yeah. like help with direction, help with posters, help with resources, help with oh my god. Like, I mean, the list goes on forever yeah. and ever and ever. Yeah. It's just like this. I feel like we've just handed our baby over to like a millionaire crash. Oh god, I feel like I've won the lottery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's wonderful, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Very so grateful. Good. Yeah. Um, mm. Thank you for some house. <laughs> Thanks. Definitely. Oh, it's a great time. How do you find it presenting? Well, I mean, we've kind of talked about it, but the the themes and the queerness and the being on stage and like looking at an audience and and saying these words, do you find it like vulnerable? Do you find it empowering? Mm. Is it a mixture? Mm. Or maybe you don't know yet. Or maybe you don't. Yeah. yeah. I think when I started writing it, I mean, my dramaturg made it clear that if you're going to write things that sort of resonate with things that have happened in your life, you need to dissociate it enough <laughs> um, so it's not you performing yourself like trauma dump into the audience. Yeah. So yeah. it's a fictional piece. I feel disconnected enough to perform it as a fictional character, fictional piece, which is good. But I hope, and I will find it liberating at the end of the performance. So I think that is a really soothing moment. And I think if I watched or read this play when I was younger, I'd find it soothing. Yeah. Mm. Oh, can I pass that question back to you guys? Yeah. yeah. I think it's it's hard because Jesse and Cam, who we play, are just flawed people. They're yeah. like you know you you know as Megs and M, like we know exactly what they're doing wrong. They're so it's like, you're writing it like oh god, you're awful. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so do like be playing Cam. I am like God. I'm saying these things and I'm almost embarrassed to be like. 
but guys, I don't think this is how like you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, but then I mean, it's all for the character, right? And it's important for the story that they're not perfect. Not that we're perfect anyway, but yeah. it, you know, that I think it's it's hard because I want you know, as an actor and as a character, you want the audience to side with you. Not that there's sides, but you want them to like you. You want them to mm. like be likable as a character because everyone in real life wants people to like them, right? So yeah. every character does as well. So then to to have an audience who's seeing you 24-7 in your own home when you're never, as a normal person, observed, then, like, you're great, great, great when you're out and about and then you go home mm. and then you're, they're very real. And so it's hard for me to be like, oh, God, yeah, okay, so now you're about to see Cam, mm. no holds barred. Mm-hmm. And, like, this is what I was saying earlier about it's difficult because she's so awful at times. <laughs> I'm like, not all queer people are like this, like this, yeah. this but... You just have to let it go, and hopefully Dude. people are not awful that they would think, oh, right, everyone's like that. But I suppose yeah. in a secret kind of way that's more relatable to the audience. True. Like, yeah. People might say it, but I think, God, I've, I've said this before. I've, I've said that, this before. I? Yeah. And I think that um, achieves more than we recognise, I suppose. Yeah, I think you're right. Thanks what so. about you, Em? What do you think? About Give how me you the feel question, standing yeah. there. How do I feel? Delivering it, queer content. It feels... It feels very... Just literally think a mixture of vulnerable and empowering and freeing. And it gives m- me an opportunity as, as a queer person myself to be representation and be on the stage mm. for myself as yeah. well as for the audience. And be like, no, no, like taking up space. I think it's about taking mm. up space, you know, and standing there and being able to say these things and be like, this is important and like you should listen and we should all be listening to each other but here's here's what i can bring i can bring my own lived experience mm-hmm. to this and obviously it's it's different and it's a character but you know it's obviously informed by me as an actor of so course. yeah really liberating i i find it i don't know it's it's well like the characters like it's all based at, in their home, home isn't it I th- nearly all of it. nearly yeah so it's great to just literally be like raw and these like people who are just like mm. here are here are all the good and flawed things that real people that say. real people say and do and think and we're all le- learning we're all growing but they're really just in it mm. so it's 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 great it's such an experience to like go through as an actor as well that it's Mm. fun I don't know I find it kind of fun I don't know if that's like no. I don't know if that's like is it like sadist or like no <laughs> <laughs> I don't know not no, that I think, but, fine. I think you're fine yeah just it's also nice to be like so Cam and Jesse yeah. fall in love and so it's nice to like when as an audience member like I love it when people fall in love on stage I'm like oh great like good for you guys like a happy life so, I don't know if you see it on stage that what people falling in love oh, yeah. I think basically every story is about falling in love yeah so. Yeah, okay, carry on. <laughs> That's how I, know, I just kind of think, like, film, <laughs> film, you get the more, like, rom-com films, the kind of the, the classic stories, and then stage, it's... You, you do get falling in love, but it's a lo- it can be a lot more of, like, um, issue plays. Yeah, Maybe that's just true. stuff that I've seen recently, but... Mm. So no, it's I nice. It's, um, to have the joy, the queer yeah, joy. Yeah, the joy, yeah, exactly. And then I feel like when I'm on stage doing it, I'm like, yes, like, look at us, like... Like, we're falling in love. Like, you're here to Mm. witness it. Like, how special for all of us Mm. that, like, you get to see something. I mean, like, life is about love, I think. So it's nice Mm. to have a show about love. It really is. It's just about love. Yeah. Mm. I think that's why I feel, I felt quite apprehensive in my writing process where Deb's experiences with relationships don't always work out Mm. what you intended with, but it still is about love just with himself. Oh, that's the best. Fair, isn't it? Yeah. Um, And, but it's not... I guess his journey is a bit difficult and it's quite ugly at times. Oh, I can't wait to see it. I'm so gassed, yeah. honestly. Oh, I'm what a journey. I feel like I'm like ready to go on the journey with you like oh. now. Like, <laughs> let's, go. Let's, go. Let's, go. <laughs> let's go. Let's go to the studio too. What other shows okay. are you excited to see at Housemates? Oh, I, I'm really excited to see Useless. Yes. Mm. It sounds wild, mm. I think. With Marisol. With Marisol, it's like, Interactive, yeah, like text, isn't it? oh yeah, of course. Text your phone. Yeah, Literally, yeah. oh, I'm no. so excited. It's going to be so like nice to see something different. Like I've not seen like interactive no. theatre like that for so for like a while. That it's like 
great. Love mm. different form of theatre as well. Yeah, it's always nice to keep the theatre ball rolling. I'm excited to see Before I Go by Toby King. Yeah. Like, in a big way. Mm. Really excited. He's got instruments. Yeah. Has he? Yes. Oh, yeah. So, um, and it's got the thing the musicians are playing, yeah, so I'm intrigued oh, wow. to see that. Mm. So when is your show on? The 11th to the 15th of July. Get your diary out. Put it in there right now. You're going to be coming to see the same, same, but different. 7.15 every night with a 2.15 matinee. On the Saturday. My show is on 5th to the 8th of July at Brixton House. Get your tickets. <laughs> get your tickets. Roll up, roll up. Everyone get your tickets. 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 <laughs> <laughs> What a lovely chat. That was Cute. Lovely. It was absolutely divine. I'm so excited. Yeah, I really too. am. I can't wait. Oh, well, thank you guys. And thank you both. Yeah. And thank you, Brixton. Thank you, Brixton. Thank you, Brixton. Big love. Big love boom, 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 boom.